Hi everyone, welcome to Knitting with Dolls. I am Julie, I'm your host, and I'm coming to you from Staten Island, New York. Welcome, this is episode four, so that's exciting. To me, it's exciting. <laughs> I don't know about to anybody else, but to me, that's exciting. Um, so welcome, welcome if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back, and if you're new, Thank you so much for checking me out and just deciding to spend a little bit of your time with me. I really appreciate it. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Bubblegum Blythe and you can find me on Rav as Bubblegum Ponies. Um, I don't have a group. I don't have a group for this podcast on Rav yet. Um, and I say yet because I'm thinking of making one. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, should I make a group? Does it makes sense like um I know I'm in a bunch of groups um and I try as hard as I can to participate in all of them but sometimes it's just you just join so many but I do have um kind of like a core group that um I really enjoy but um I think I'll start a group when I decide to do maybe like a knit along or something but, um, you know, you guys let me know. Like, should I start a group? Would you join? Would, I don't know. Let me know. If you want one, I'll make one. If not, it's okay. I just like hanging out with you guys and chatting and stuff like that here. Um, I do have a blog. It's uh, knittingwithdolls.wordpress.com. And that is where I post my show notes. <clears throat> so anything I talk about will be linked there. And um, if I ever forget anything, if I ever mention anything and I forget to write it down on the blog, just leave me a comment or, you know, you can just contact me and I'll let you know anything. So yeah, um, how's everybody doing? Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope your week was awesome. Um, I hope you got a lot of crafty time and, you know. Yeah, I just hope you had a good week. I just feel myself getting lost in my thoughts already, and we just started, so let's try to stay focused. Um, my week was okay. Um, it wasn't anything super, you know, nothing super exciting happened. Um, I took my son to a birthday party on Saturday, which happened to be pouring, but it was okay. Um, he he had fun at first he wasn't having fun because it was in a it was in a place it was called boom kids and it was kind of like um, it's kind of like I don't know how to explain it really like McDonald's like remember back in the day you used to go to McDonald's and they used to have like the playground and you would like climb up in like tubes and stuff and then there would be like slides so my kiddo was not a fan of the heights, so there was some crying, but then he got over it and he had a really fun time. <laughs> Luckily, he's not like super old and like, Mom, why are you telling her but I'm crying? Like, it's fine. Everybody cries, right? That has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's get into the show. Okay, let's get into the knitting. I'm gonna show you guys my works in progress. Let's talk about that. Because I gotta go pick up the kiddo, actually. Talking about the kiddo, I gotta go pick him up soon. So works in progress, um, basically I started one new project. Everything else is still, everything I was working on last week, I'm still working on this week. The Hermione socks I'm still working on. And I feel like they're just taking me forever I don't know why it's just taking me so long but I won't show them again because I've showed them so many times but I am almost done with them I am up to the foot please let me finish these socks because <laughs> I just want them done um, so yeah so I'm still working on that I'm still working on my um, sorry my eye is twitching like crazy, so it's really distracting. Because it's springtime, so of course it's like allergy season now. And um, 
I've never really had allergies before, but the last few years it's been like so bad that it just is messing me up. I know you guys probably can't see it, but I feel like you can. So now I'm like, oh my God, they're going to see my crazy eye. And also I'm blaming the allergies on my sniffles. So I apologize for that. But we're going to push through. Um, yeah, I'm still working on my Pebble Beach um, Cholette. I'm not going to show it because it kind of looks the same as it did last week. I, I, I honestly, I didn't really work on it this week. Um, I did start a new project, which I'll show you now. Um, it's being kept in my Sugar Skulls project bag that I made myself. And I made this using Nicole from Hue Loco, her tutorial. She has a tutorial on YouTube and she also has a... You sign up for her email. Sorry. Hair. Sorry. Um, you sign up for her email and she'll send you a PDF for the pattern. The pattern pieces. Yeah, and then you just print them out. And then you make yourself a bag. So my new project, it's, it's a sock. Um, I'm doing a Rose City Roller which if you're not fam familiar with, um, it's a shorty sock and it was written by Mara. I don't know, I might say her last name on the pattern, but she is Orange Knits on Instagram. And if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. Her feed is so beautiful. Oh, Mara Catherine Reiner. It's a free pattern um, and this is actually the first sock I've ever knit was a Rose City Roller I think I mentioned that before but it's a great um, pattern for anyone who wants to learn how to knit socks because it just gets right to like the nitty-gritty it's like you knit um, you know you you'll knit the little you can't even call it a leg it's not really a leg it's just like the cuff and then you go straight into the heel and then the heel turn and then it just gets down to like the nitty-gritty of socks and I like it I use this pattern all the time for um, the heel the heel because I like the heel so I'm just doing like a modified version because I did do some ribbing and um, I'm down to I'm up to the gusset decreases so it's not too much but I just wanted to make a cute little springtime sock and I'm kind of annoyed because I got that freaking hole I was doing so well with all my socks without like this hole and I even see it right there and I even picked up you know the extra stitches and stuff I mean it's not that big of a deal because you'll just stitch it close but it still annoyed me um, so yeah, so I'm doing contrasting cuff and toe. The toe is going to be green and I'm using, um, Knit Pick Stroll Brights, of course, because I just love the neon. Like I said, I'm like obsessed. <laughs> so the pink is the Stroll. Everything's falling. The pink is the Stroll in the Brights and the yarn I'm using is from House House of a la mode House of a la mode and I hope I have enough I think I should but this is her and her name is Heather House of a la mode is Heather and the the name of this yarn is I want my I want my um, I got this in an update that she did with shoot I forgot I don't even know if she does it anymore she used to do it every first weekend of the month what is it called I know somebody knows who's watching this I apologize I forgot I'll link it but I don't even know if she does it anymore I think she has her own website now but this was like one of her colorways and I don't think she 
makes it any more. I was like super lucky to get it because they block in my face. <laughs> because they always uh, sell out. Dang it. I'm like really upset that I can't remember what that website was. I'll link it. Or maybe I'll put it down down here. Yeah, but it's super fun. These were this was actually the yarn I used when I made my sun socks. Um I made him some little tube socks and I was like, Jackson, like pick any yarn you want. Like what what color do you want your socks? And he picked out this and I was like, Yep. Definitely my kid. So it's super fun. It's fun and bright and I really, really I really, really like it, and it's really soft. I've made some dolly hats using it. Oh, I don't have them here. But, um, yeah, and it has, like, really nice stitch definition, and, yeah. So that's what I started. I just wanted something quick, and I think I'm going to add a little pom-pom, because -pom, I love little, like, shorty pom-pom socks. It just reminded me of my childhood, just being young and having no worries you know so that was the new work in progress um i'm still working on my mom's mother's day gifts um it's the dovetail scarf from pearl soho i don't think i showed it last week but i'll show it this week because i am making progress on it oh and the bag is from olivia plus O. It's Olive plus O. God. On Etsy. She's on Etsy. But yeah, it's my favorite. And these are alpacas. I think last time I called them llamas. They're alpacas. Right? I think so. <laughs> I love the little baby ones. Well, this is my, like one of my favorite bags. Anyway. So this is what I have. And this is the Dove Tail Scarf from Pearl Soho. And it is growing. And this looks terrible. <laughs> because it's just really bunched up. But yeah, it is growing. It is growing. This is my car knitting. This is what I take when I'm waiting for the kiddo to get out of school. So whenever, you know, however long I, I have, that's when I work on it. Yeah, and I changed the needles to some, sorry for shaking the camera. I changed the needles to like chow goo, and this is the first time I'm using them, and I kind of like them. They're like sharp, but not like, they're not like the high high sharps. Those things are like weapons. But, um, yeah, and the cord is nice, and it, you know, like it spins and stuff, and I like it. It's smooth. It works well with this yarn. And um, like I said in my first video, I don't know what this yarn is. It was just like old. It was just an old stash, but it's coming along. This is how much I have left of that, of the ball. So I think I am going to use the another ball because I want it to be big. Because my mom isn't the type to wear like, you know, just, what are they called? Like handkerchief scarves so yeah I'm working on that hopefully I'll be done before Mother's Day <laughs> but I think I mentioned it before it's a really easy knit um, especially for beginners it's just the most complicated thing and if you even want to call it like complicated it's like you do yarn overs and that's it so you know and it's nice. It's you, know, you get the eyelet and stuff like that. It's a really easy kind of like mindless project. So that's my car knitting. So those were my works in progress. Um, yeah, those are my works in progress. That's it. I can't have too many. If I have too many whips, I get. I feel like. <sighs> My anxiety kicks in to high gear. I can't have too many things going on, and then I just feel that pressure of like, oh, I have to finish it, I have to finish it. And, you know, knitting and crafting, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to relieve you of stress, not cause.
cause you stress. So I think that's all I'm going to like cast on, even though I'm in such a mood to cast on everything. Like maybe it's the seasons changing, but I really want to start See, now I'm going in, so I want to be starting something. But whatever, who cares? <laughs> I really want to start um, a carnigan. Um, I'm, I'm not a sweater wearer. I just don't like how sweaters look on me. Because, you know, you got, like, chubs going on. And I just don't really like it. But I am definitely, like, a carnigan girl. And I love oversized, like, grandpa, like... Macklemore, let me borrow your grandpa's clothes. Like, I like big, oversized um, cardigans and stuff like that. So I've been looking at patterns, but I just I need to I need to pump my brakes because I just need to finish all my other little projects and stuff like that. So mm, tangent, but so yeah. So that was everything for works in progress. So now on to my FOS. I only really have one finished object and I have one older finished object that I'm going to show you but um, I'll start with I'll start with the older finished project so I wanted to show you these are some socks these were like the first socks that I finished that wasn't um, a rose city roller so these were my first you know like I don't want to say real sock because what's like a fake sock but my first sock with like a leg, I guess. Um, and I followed, I loosely followed um, Susan B. Anderson's How I Make My Socks um, pattern. And yeah, so I did um, a rounded toe. And then there's a heel flap. I just really like heel flaps. And again, I did not bring the sock blockers. I don't know. Maybe by episode 10, I'll learn, right? Maybe. And then that, and this heel I like, I don't know what it's called. It's not a square heel. I don't know. What is this heel called? Does anybody know? It's not like triangle? I don't know, but it's a short row. Oh, is that what it's called? Short row? Short row heel? I don't know. But I like it. It fits my foot really nice. And this yarn is Knit Picks. This was the Knit Picks Bear Felici. And I dyed this yarn myself. And I have a little bit left. So I'll show you what it looks like in the cake. I don't know if you can really tell. But um, yeah, so this was super fun. I really, really enjoyed dyeing yarn. Um, yeah, so this was like the Knit Picks, and it's super soft. If you've ever knit with Felici, I think um, like their self-striping yarn is Felici. Um, if you are thinking of dyeing your own yarn and just like trying it out, I highly recommend Knit Picks. Um, they're affordable. I think it was like maybe like $10, and that was like the pricier one. I think they have one for less, like 8 or something like that. And it was really fun to do and I I really liked how it knit up I was pleasantly surprised and um, it was just really really fun I really enjoyed dyeing yarn and that is something that I would love to do again and I used um, food coloring now I will say and the way I did it, I did it on the stove top because I only have one. I mean, I probably could have put it in the microwave to heat set it, um, being that I just use food coloring. Because you don't want to use your microwave if you're using acid dyes. You don't want to put it in the microwave that you're eating your food because you don't want to turn into like a mutant. <laughs> you shouldn't do it because it's highly toxic. You shouldn't joke around about that stuff. But um, yeah, I did it on the stove top and I heat set it there and I have to say I have put these in the washing machine and the dryer so by doing that the purple ran I don't know if you could really tell um, 
but it did turn it like kind of like pinkish like the white turned a little pink but I don't know if it's really coming up um, maybe a little bit but compared to you can tell that this is much whiter than the socks but it doesn't bother me I actually kind of like it tinted um yeah I say give it a go if you are thinking of dyeing your own yarn and it's like really fun it's really fun and it's I just really liked it <laughs> I feel like I'm repeating myself I really like doing it and I say go for it try it and it's super satisfying like knitting with your own hand dyed yarn I can imagine what like knitting with your own like hand spun God, it must be magic but yeah so I really like this yarn it's like really soft and even after and I've worn them and washed them like a bunch of times and I go to the laundromat so that's like really high heat and like really uh what's the word it's just like laundry mat washing machine and dryer so it's not like gentle it's not like on the gentle cycle and they have softened up so much like Felici's already a soft squishy yarn but now that they're washed and they kind of felt it a little bit I love them so that was an old fo um, I wanted to show you oh and plus, this goes towards my boxo socks that Kristen from the Yarngasm, she is doing a, a year-long knit-along that you've probably heard about. But these were my January socks. So yeah. So go try dyeing your own yarn. It's super fun. And that was with, uh, I used neon, of course, neon. Um, I used neon food coloring for that. Super fun. Uh, my next FO is this little guy. So yeah, I finished my little stuffy. Um, it's a little jellyfish. I haven't named him. I'll let my son name him. But yeah, so this was for Legacy Knits, Sue and Chelsea. They're stuffy along. Um... I crocheted him and I used I used these two size hooks I used the five I used the five which is an H and a size 4.25 millimeter which is a G or a six and this is five millimeter H which is also an US 8 so those were the two hooks that I used, and he was a super fun little project um yeah i just added this little hangy thing so you can hang around and i want to make so many more it was super quick i think this took me like a day not even like uh, hours like a few hours but you could finish it in like a day if you have like time to sit and do it you could totally maybe like three hours or something like that but yeah so that's my little stuffy that's what I'm putting in for the knit along for the stuffy along and that like I said is being hosted by Sue and Chelsea of Legacy Knits so that was fun I really liked him I'm definitely gonna make another one um, and that's it that's it for my finished objects I don't really have anything else so um, I'll share some um, sash enhancement I still don't know what I want to call that I just want to show you the yarn I bought so this week well I got it like a few days ago I got this guy look how pretty and how nice are those colors I've been I don't know it's so weird I'll show you my other stuff but it definitely reminds me of fall and I was definitely enabled by Mara orange knits um, she had knit a sock using this color and this is Harvalyn yarns and this is her sock science sock science colorway and this is her Pax sock it's a two ply fingering weight 80% superwash merino 20% nylon it's 400 yards and it is super pretty Mara she made some 
I don't know if they're really considered like Franken socks or maybe like scrappy socks, but she used all of the dyer is Carol. She used all of like Carol's yarns in this one sock, and I was just like, I need that. So enabled, that was it. And yeah, I really like it. It's like super fally colors, but I don't even mind. Like I just think they're really happy. And if you go check out um Mara's Instagram, you'll see how pretty it knits up. Like sometimes it's hard to tell what a yarn is gonna look like, but once you see it knit up, it's like mm, sold. And then I love the little washi tape that Carol sent. Because um if you follow her on Instagram, you would know that she has a pet blue jay, which I think is like so cool. I love blue jays. Sometimes we get like a family that flies in the big tree by us. And it doesn't matter how many times I've seen a blue jay or a cardinal or, you know, any type of like, it just always puts a smile on my face. I'm always like, oh, look, a blue jay. And it's like, I just seen one the other day, but it's still like, oh my God, a blue jay. Um, so yeah. So once again, sock science. Super pretty. I really like it. And this is going to be become socks. Uh, and my other acquisitions. Um, I placed an order with Knit Picks. And I got these guys. Again, really like folly colors. I don't know why. Now I realize they kind of match my shirt. Um, I wanted to try the tweed. Because I've never tried um, tweed yarn before. I've never knit with tweed yarn. So I got two of these. This is the oyster color. And this is the stroll. And then I was thinking heels and toes because I just got one ball each. I really like this bright yellow. It's dandelion. Mm -hmm. And hot tamale. This is another one of the brights, the stroll brights. You cannot have too much brights. So I was thinking of pairing this together, these two. Maybe all three. I don't know. That kind of washes it out. Yeah, I think these two I might pair together just for some cute, some cute socks. Yep. Put that over there. Um, this is not like yarn stuff, but I just thought it was super cute. I wanted to share with you guys anyway. I got these from Target. They're like little note cards. Um, I love plants um we are actually quick off topic but we are growing a tree um in the beginning of the year in the beginning of the school year back in september september october my son and his friend they were at the park and my son like any other little kid he loves collecting rocks sticks leaves nature he just loves to bring it home and keep it in his little boxes and stuff um him and his friend they had collected a bunch of like acorn like i said acorns and sticks and stuff and so um i had this huge bag of stuff so i put i put some of it in a glass jar kind of like a terrarium type thing and i put it on my windowsill and that was back in october so you know come january i noticed that one of the acorns cracked open and it was growing um roots and I was like oh snap so I left it you know like I left it alone and then I noticed that you know the roots were getting bigger and bigger and I was like hmm so it was maybe last month I think um yeah I think it was like last month I took the acorn out because I didn't want to open the jar because then there was like little bugs in there and I was just like mm. I'm not a fan of bugs <laughs> so I opened the jar and I took the acorn out the bugs were dead. I don't know how they died. But anyway. So I finally opened the jar and I took the acorn out and I put it in, you know, like a pot of dirt. <clears throat> this little acorn sprouted like two days after I put it in the big pot of dirt. He just started growing and growing and growing. And now it's like we are kind of growing a tree. I mean, it's not, it's obviously not a tree yet, but it's like a plant. I think it takes about 20 years for like an oak to really 
um, grow to its fullest height. I don't know. Jenny, <laughs> Lone Larch, I know you're not watching this, but if any of you know Jenny, ask her how long it takes for um, an oak tree to grow to its fullest. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not potential, but you know what I'm talking about. To its fullest height. Um, so yeah, so I thought that's super cool. Um, hopefully one day we'll have a house and we could plant this tree and then my son could watch it grow and I'm really excited about this. But so yeah, back to the postcards. Um, I love cactuses and succulents. Like I have like so many um, plants and stuff. So when I saw this, I just thought it was perfect. And it's from the dollar bin. Even if you put them in like a frame or something, I just thought the artwork was like really, really cute. And I just felt like sharing that with you guys. A dollar. So yeah, so that's it for all the yarning stuff. I was gonna go into doll talk. And so if you're just here for like the knitting and all that stuff, Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Um, so yeah, so now on to doll talk. Um, this episode, I mean, we're going to do Blythe 101. I'm sticking with the Blythe 101 for now. And I just wanted to talk about um, the different sizing because there are three sizes of Blythe, three different um, doll sizes. And, you know, for all you new collectors or you know people who want to get in the hobby you might wonder like what is this now so what I'm going to show you is the regular Blythe so this is James she's a custom Blythe she's a custom Blythe and she was customized by Alice uh, Alice Blythe um, that's her name on Instagram and that's her name on Facebook so, and I named her James. I'm going to try to pick her up, but I'll drop it here. So she is a Neo. She is a Neo Blythe. And Neo Blythes are about 11 and a half inches. They're 11 and a half inches tall. And this is the most common doll that you'll see. This is the most common Blythe that people collect. Um... Oh, she's okay. That just gave me a heart attack. <laughs> I might try to edit this out, but if not, she is okay. So that's the most common Blythe, 11 and a half inches. Now, the next size I don't have, but she is called a Midi, a Midi Blythe. I used to have one, but I sold her. Um, I will try to insert a picture of the one that I had. And the one I had, she was called um, Lydia, Lydia Brown. And Midi Blights are kind of like the Neo's younger sister. And they measure 8 inches. So you would think that they come up to like, maybe like here? how tall like a midi is um yeah so that's the second and now the third size is the petite and I do have petites and petites they measure four inches so I have two so these are the little petite blights this is scooter the squirrel and this is fig the frog I don't remember their release names, but these are the names that I gave them. And what they do, like how the how the Neil Blythes, their eyes change color. And the Middies, their eyes don't change, but there's um, there's like a thing in the back of their head that you could change their eyes and it changes like directions. And then Middies also have like a tilt head so you could give them that cute little like hmm, look you know but what petites do is when you lay them down which you're I don't know how you're gonna see that but their eyes close so that's what they do 
But they're just so cute. They're just like, you know, pocket size and you could put them in a tree and take a picture and just, you just, they're cute. These are the two that I have. I don't have any more. I don't think I'm going to get any more. It's because I'm obsessed with squirrels and come on, like a frog in a raincoat. How can you not love this? It's so cute. So yeah, so it's Scooter and Fig, my little guys. And then there's also another type of Blythe, kind of the same size as them, but that's the um, the little pet shop Blythe, which was released by Hasbro, and that coincides with the little list pet shop um, cartoon that they have. I forgot what channel it comes on, but it's a cartoon. I don't really like it, but yeah. So you have a Neo which is like the big sister and then you have Mitty which I don't have unfortunately to show you and then you have the petite yep so that's that's basically it for the uh, sizing of the dolls I hope that was helpful um, I will insert a picture of the Mitty so you could see the size difference but yeah I think that's it for today guys thank you so much for checking me out um, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about but no I think that was it yeah okay so let me know if you guys want me to start a group or you know if you have any questions about anything or if you have any like suggestions for the podcast and all that stuff cuz I don't know sometimes I feel a little like what am I doing <laughs> like why am I doing this like I don't know I digress we're gonna end this on a good on a good note um okay you guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for you know all the love that you have been showing me I really do appreciate it, it really does mean a lot and I will see you guys next time have a wonderful week bye